The aim of this video is just to go over the spinal cord, so this video is a fast recap on the spinal cord geared towards leaving cert biology and it's all part of the chapter on the nervous system, which is a chapter filled with diagrams. So the spinal cord has a good few diagrams, including the reflex arc, and the first thing to do is to always get a good basic label diagram and make sure that you can reproduce one. So this is a very simple diagram of the spinal cord. You can see the white matter, axons only make up the white matter. Grey matter contains cell bodies and also dendrites. And then you have that hole at the centre, the central canal, filled with that cerebrospinal fluid. Remember, sometimes you may not get a diagram, you might be given a photograph, so it's important to have a look at the real thing. So here you can see the white matter, you can also see the grey matter, and it looks a good bit like the diagram we've just drawn, but it's important to be really familiar with other diagrams and proper medical photographs. I always imagine the spinal cord to be a bit like a rope leading down from the brain and it's passing through this column of bones, the vertebrae, 33 of them, and it's the vertebrae that protect the spinal cord. Leading into the spinal cord at the sides are these nerves and nerves attach the spinal cord through the gaps or gaps in between each of the vertebrae and the spinal cord runs down through the neural canal of each of those vertebrae. It's important to remember that the spinal cord is also protected by those membranes, the meninges, and there are three meninges, and in between each of them is cerebrospinal fluid. So the first two important labels are recognizing and knowing what white matter is, where it is on the diagram, and the same with gray matter. Nervous impulses enter the spinal cord through the dorsal root. The dorsal area is towards the back of the spinal cord and you'll recognize it because of the dorsal root swelling. The impulses are carried by sensory neurons. Nervous impulses are carried out of the spinal cord by motor neurons and they leave through the ventral root at the front of the spinal cord. Now it's important to recognise that these same labels are on both sides of the spinal cord diagram. So you're going to have the dorsal root, the dorsal root swelling and the ventral root on the other side as well. So be careful, you might be given a diagram where it's coming in the other side and don't get confused. So next let's go on to a reflex action and this is an example of a reflex action used often. So hitting just below the knee and the leg kicks out. A reflex action is an automatic, unthinking response to a stimulus and it's there for protection. So imagine if you put your hand on something hot, you quickly pull it away. That's a reflex action and it's there to protect you, to stop you from getting burned. A reflex arc shows the pathway taken by nerves in a reflex action, so how the impulse is carried into the spinal cord and then the impulse is carried out towards a muscle or other effector. In a reflex action, the stimulus is detected and the impulse is carried by a sensory neuron into the central nervous system, into the spinal cord. It enters through the dorsal root. The impulse is then passed within the spinal cord to an interneuron or relay neuron. The interneuron will then pass an impulse to a motor neuron and at the same time it will pass it to a neuron which will carry the information to the brain. A motor neuron carries the impulse out of the spinal cord, leaving through the ventral root. When it reaches an effector, for example a muscle, an action takes place and just as the action takes place the brain is made aware of the need for that action. The brain did not direct that action so it's an unthinking response to a stimulus. So that concludes the rapid recap on the spinal cord. It's good to look over those diagrams and it's good to break down the nervous system into small bite-sized videos or little sessions. So this is all part of the nervous system where diagrams are so important. Can you draw and label the diagrams of the neurons? And can you draw and label a synapse and give an account of what happens there? What about the parts of the brain? All of these might be on your exam in June. So the very best of luck with all of that revision. Remember, use your textbooks, do past papers and check official marking schemes and use all available resources. The very best of luck.